Hey Gibbs fans, you are one of many and I am to show you what happened when I stepped into May Gibbs Magic Circle. Since International Year, I floated an idea to do six documentaries on six famous Australian women, one for each state. May Gibbs' life was a mystery and I concentrated on her story. And the following interviews will reveal some of the events associated with this project. Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie, Bib and Bub, Little Ragged Blossom. These are some of the children's books that made May Gibbs a household name. But despite her popularity, very little is known about the famous authoress. And that has prompted filmmaker Maureen Walsh, who visited Wollongong today, to write the biography, May Gibbs, Mother of the Gum Nuts. I love the little ants that ply, here and there and know not why. The lizard sunning on the bark, and even the snake hid in the dark. I love the bush by lonely place, yet undisturbed by human race. Weird thoughts it strikes up in my mind of ages dead and left behind. Well, May Gibbs has an absolute fascination for me. And I think it grew from when I was a child. I was one of the generations that grew up on the May Gibbs Bib and Bub cartoons. What is it about his style of writing that appeals to you? May Gibbs is a wonderful storyteller for children. She never, has, she never has a logical plot. Her adventures go off on different uh, adventures. She has parallel action. Beneath the whole of the story, there are all these little subplots and all these little characters. If Maureen Walsh has anything to do with it, the famous authoress Mae Gibbs will become known as the mother of Australian children's literature. So impressed with the style of writing, 11 years ago, Maureen decided to do some research into the authoress's background. Not a thing existed on her, and I just became fascinated. I believe that she spooked me. She still hasn't left me because there's all kinds of fascinating projects going to roll on since the biographies come out. Now, in 1985, there's an enormous resurgence of interest in May Gibbs. Her gumnut characters are appearing everywhere, on stationery, pottery, and as jewellery, and a recent exhibition of her work at the Botanical Gardens in Sydney attracted people in their thousands. So we're understandably very excited about the May Gibbs collection, this splendid two-volume set which presents May's biography and her collected gumnut classics. The biography, lovingly researched and written by Maureen Walsh, is also a showcase for much of her unpublished work. Generations of Australian uh, families, be they young children, mums or grandparents, have been enchanted, obviously over the years, by Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie. Well, there's now a complete collection being published of the works of May Gibbs, and also Maureen Welsh has spent the past 11 years putting together the mother of the gum nuts, the actual story of May Gibbs who wrote Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie, um, and hundreds of other stories about uh, the little gum nut fairies and their friends. Maureen has joined us in the studio this morning to talk about the works, and of course, the lady. Welcome Maureen, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much sir. Eleven years it took you to actually put the book together. Well it wasn't eleven years sort of minute to the end of the eleven years minute. It was, um, I am a, a film producer director. I had my own business and uh, we work on a contract basis so in between you get spaces and uh, you fill that up doing creative works. I did a TV series with Ron and Valerie Taylor mm -hmm. and had uh, earned myself quite a, a considerable sum of money and I'd been thinking about doing a, a project on May Gibbs uh, ever since I came back from overseas, from Canada in 69. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea just kept niggling at me and niggling at me. And uh, my accountant said, well, Maureen, why don't you go and do something for yourself for a change? Famous last words. Mm -hmm. I was very surprised that nothing existed on the shelves about Gibbs, not even a list of her published works. So I went from person to person and then passed me on to the next person. Um, and I discovered that uh, 24 enormous boxes, uh, cardboard boxes, were lodged at the Mitchell Library in New South Wales. And that's the material that was taken out of her little house called Nutcote from Neutral Bay when she died. Mm. Uh, it had been there for about seven years and no one had done anything about it. Uh, of course, the librarian had to be assured that I was um, um, sincere about my undertaking of doing the project and it took them two years to catalogue all her works. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of thousand bib and bubs, uh, uh, about three and a half hundred tiggy touchwoods, uh, about three and a half hundred gumnut gossips, which are little short stories. And um, 
it just sort of uh, took hold of me and I just kept coming back to it in between tra projects. About uh, 70, I'd written a screenplay, a feature documentary about her, mm -hmm. and um, I had so much material I thought, well, why not write a book? Mm -hmm. Famous last words. I had considerable experience writing screenplays, but I really hadn't done a book. So I started out, I received a fellowship from the Australia Council for six months just to concentrate on the project. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, you support a grant, a grant doesn't support you. But out of that three thousand, three and a half thousand dollars, the Australian public and the government have received a, a three and a half million dollar project with this, with this package. Mm -hmm. And I imagine half of it will go in tax, so... You probably will. <laughs> May has contributed to the uh, public purse considerably. Well, May Gibbs herself was a, was a fascinating lady. She came over to Australia when she was about four years old. That's right, on the sailing ship called the Hesperus. Mm -hmm. um, she and her mum and a young brother followed their father who had come out earlier. Her mum and dad were very fine artists in their own right, and dad was also a draftsman. But they came from a, an English farming background and uh, they decided to uh, make their fortune in Australia. And like so many other immigrants, they went broke. He went back into a lands department, then they moved over to uh, Western Australia to an area called the Harvey, just south of Perth. Mm -hmm. And of course it is the home of the Australian wildflowers. I don't know if you've been to Perth, but the wildflowers yeah. there are just luxurious. There's no other word. They're bigger and fatter and more beautiful than the rest of Australia. Um, they went broke on that property and uh, then they moved up to Perth and Dad went into the lands department and stayed there for the rest of his working life. So at what age did she actually start writing her, um, her little stories and doing the beautiful little sketches of the characters? May said I could almost draw before I could walk and mm. she was obviously had an enormous talent because the artist colony that was set up in Perth at that time about 18... 89 um, gave her tremendous uh, support and they were very talented people they'd be into musicals and she was quite a very fine uh, violinist too mm -hmm. um may uh, in her works at the age of 13 there's a picture in the biography of her drawings of naked children mm -hmm. at the age of eight she won a competition in the local newspaper and then the biography was very, very hard to structure. I to find this now. These presumably are the, the sketches that... Uh, no, no, that's in England. Oh, these ones about in England, 22. Yes, yes. Fabulous sketches, though, even that... Uh, she did about four trips to England, yes. uh, went to the Polytechnic, um, went to um, various night schools. She mm. said there's a lot of fun at night schools. Mm. Was a pupil of Augustus John for a period, who she wasn't very uh, happy about. And... Um, about 1911 she was very ill in England and came back to Australia, went to Perth, could see that there weren't any opportunities there in the publishing business and of course came to the, uh, to the East Coast. Mm -hmm. um, she used to do illustrations for the newspaper on lifestyles at the time and there's mm -hmm. a whole collection of them, they're absolutely beautiful. And obviously all the little Bib and Bub characters are in Bib and Bub and all their friends are in here as well. Absolutely. It's a wonderful collection. If you've, if you've fallen in love, obviously, or been brought up with Snugglepot and Cuddle Pie and all the various little friends, there's is that the complete works or almost the complete uh, works? There's one published book missing there, but that belongs to another publisher. Right. And that's so Prince you've got virtually the complete works, the Gumnut Classics, in that enormous volume, plus the mother of the Gumnuts, which is the story of May Gibbs, her life, and how Snugglepot and Cuddle Pie and all the little friends actually came into being. That's right. It's a lot of work, Maureen Walsh, 11 years' work there, something I think you should well be proud of. And it's on the shelves. Very luckily, just in time for Christmas. Yes, very luckily. Clever lucky. lady. <laughs> Make a beautiful collector's piece. Not just for the children, because for small children, I'd be afraid I think that they would spoil it. Oh, it'll but become an heirloom. It has to. Yeah. It's marvellous. Thanks very much, Maureen, for coming in to talk to us this morning. My Lovely pleasure. having you with us. Thank you right, very We much. can continue for years to come being enchanted by the stories of Maygib. Join us later. We'll be back with Ian in a moment after the break. Mm -hmm.